On February 20th, 1962, Marine test pilot and Mercury 7 astronaut John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth, launched by an Atlas rocket similar to this one. Launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida, John Glenn orbited Earth three times before splashing down in the Atlantic Ocean. Once back on Earth, John Glenn became an instant American hero, leaving the astronaut corps to become a long-serving United States Senator. However, he would return to orbit 36 years later as part of the Space Shuttle Program's STS-95 mission, becoming at the time the oldest person to ever go to space and still holds the record of the oldest person to orbit the Earth. Here at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, the legacy of John Glenn's Friendship 7 Mercury flight is represented by the Atlas rocket on display in Rocket Park. This particular Atlas rocket is a later one in the series than the ones used for the early 1960s Mercury program, but it's nearly identical in structure. Of course, keeping an Atlas rocket on display is no easy task, since the rocket material needed to be so thin and lightweight to launch. The metal could be no thicker than a U.S. dime. Because of this, air needs to constantly be pumped into the rocket to keep it inflated or pressurized. Don't believe me? Hear what John Glenn had to say about it when he visited the Rocket Center in 1992. It used to call it a steel balloon, and it really was. When they brought it cross country, as I recall, they had a guy rode back here someplace in a little, he rode in here, yeah. and he monitored the pressure on the tank and would pump it up or down yeah. as they rode cross country because if all the pressure went out of the inside of it, the metal in there was so thin, it would just collapse like a steel balloon. Keeping the Atlas on display involves science. If the air compressor attached to the rocket stops regulating the amount of air pressure within, a vacuum will be created, and the greater external pressure will cause the rocket to collapse inward. To demonstrate this, I have two aluminum soda cans, one unopened and full of pressurized liquid, and the other opened and the liquid removed. When I step on the empty soda can, my downward force represents an outside pressure greater than the internal pressure of the empty can. This outside pressure has crushed the can because there is less internal pressure to resist the greater outside pressure pressing down upon it. Now, if I step on the full soda can, it doesn't collapse because it's fully pressurized. That's why the air pressure within the rocket needs to match the air pressure pushing down upon it from the outside. Historically for launch, this rocket was not pressurized with air, but by liquid fuel, similar to the soda can pressurized with liquid. Because of this science and the legacy of John Glenn and his fellow Mercury 7 astronauts, the Atlas rocket has been able to remain an important part of our museum collection, continuing to inspire the next generation of history-achieving scientists, engineers, and astronauts.